this video, we're going to look at the tangent function. When we look at angles and radians, we might also want to know the slope of the line that is formed by the angle. We can easily find the x and y coordinates using sine and cosine, um, but we might need the slope. And so we have a trig function that is actually defined by the slope. In the graph here, we're looking at the angle formed by pi over 6 on the unit circle. So the point on the unit circle is square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Now we can use that point and the origin on the unit circle to calculate the slope of that line. So let's write the origin point here at 0, 0, and then use the x and y coordinates of 0, 0 and square root of 3 over 2, 1 half to calculate the slope of this line formed by the angle pi over 6. So just as a reminder, slope is just the difference of y's or delta y over the difference in x values or delta x. In this case, the y values are 1 half and 0, and the x values are square root of 3 over 2 and 0. So let's go ahead and do that subtraction. We do 1 half minus 0 in the numerator and square root of 3 over 2 minus 0 in the denominator. This gives us 1 half over the square root of 3 over 2. And since that's a fraction divided by a fraction, we could write it as the numerator fraction times the reciprocal of the denominator fraction. So that'll be 1 half, the numerator fraction, times the reciprocal of the denominator, which would be 2 over the square root of 3. And so uh, the 2's reduced to make 1's, and we end up with 1 over the square root of 3 for the slope of that line. Now we often like to rationalize when we have square roots in the denominator. That's just because we like to have integer numbers in denominators. It makes it easier to find common denominators. So to rationalize this, I'll just remind you what that process looks like. We take 1 over the square root of 3, and we multiply by that denominator. So we multiply it by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Now remember that the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, it's really just a factor of 1. And so we're not really uh, multiplying by anything crazy here. We're just multiplying it by 1, but we are changing the way it looks. 1 times the square root of 3 on top would give us square root of 3 in the numerator, and square root of 3 times the square root of 3 in the denominator would be just 3. So this is the slope of the line formed by the angle pi over 6 on the unit circle. I'm just going to make a little arrow here and say the slope is square root of 3 over 3. So the slope of pi over 6 on the unit circle is square root of 3 over 3. Now, because the slope might be useful to us, we can also calculate the slope for some kind of generic angle. That time we did it for a specific angle, the angle pi over 6, but we can also do it for the generic angle. And let's use the generic angle theta, which is a Greek letter, write out theta, T-H-E-T-A, uh, which is often used in trig functions. Um, and so we're going to use the generic angle theta in radians corresponding to a point A comma B on the unit circle. So again, we've got two points on this line formed in the unit circle. We have the origin, which is 0, 0, and we have the point on the unit circle formed by the angle theta in radians. And so again, we can find the slope. The slope is just the change in y, delta y, over the change in x, delta x. The change in y, we're going to subtract b minus 0, which is, of course, just b. And for the change in x, we're going to subtract and do a minus 0. And so we have b over a. So the slope formed by this angle, this generic angle theta on the unit circle, is just b over a. Now, you should also remember that that point a comma b actually corresponds to cosine theta sine theta for any angle. So cosine theta would correspond to a and sine theta would correspond to b. So if we plug that in, we will get a slope of sine theta over cosine theta. And 
that slope is actually how we define the trigonometric function tangent of theta. So the slope of the line formed by angle theta is b over a, or sine theta over cosine theta, or as we write this now, tangent theta. And that's abbreviated with the letters t-a-n. So we see t-a-n and then the letter theta. We read this as tangent, t-a-n-g-e-n-t, theta, t-h-e-t-a. So that's how we would read it out loud. So now when we form an angle on the unit circle, we know the x-coordinate, we know the y-coordinate, and we know the slope of the line that's formed. That's from cosine theta, sine theta, and tangent theta. Now we're moving on to graphing, and we're going to leave theta behind because we typically graph trig functions using x or t to represent the angle and radians, and that's just simplicity of you know, typing on a keyboard. So this gives us the trig function definition, tangent x equals sine x over cosine x, instead of tangent theta equals sine theta over cosine theta. So this is the notation that we'll be using for the rest of this video. Let's see what the graph of y equals tangent x actually looks like. I have a set of axes for you here that contains a plot of y equals sine x and y equals cosine x. On the y-axis, we're looking between negative 2 and 2, and on the x-axis, we're counting off by pi. So we have 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Um, and remember that you can set it that way when you use something like Desmos to graph. Let's just jump over to Desmos and see what tangent x looks like. Just as a reminder, if you need to set the scale on the x-axis in terms of pi, go into the wrench menu and where the x-axis is set, put in pi over two as the step size. And remember, you can use the letters pi and then divided by two, and that'll convert to a pi over two. You can also count by pi or two pi, or whatever you'd like. That's just done in the wrench menu. So we have sine graphed, we have cosine graphed, and now I'm going to add the graph of y equals tangent x. Now, you can see that y equals tangent x is periodic, that is, it repeats. It is a function that increases and then kind of jumps back down and increases again, and then jumps back down and increases again. So it's a repeating, increasing function with these gaps between the highest point and the lowest point. Those gaps are actually vertical asymptotes in the graph. I'm going to add those with dashed lines at x equals pi over 2, x equals 3 pi over 2, x equals negative pi over 2, and that would of course continue to repeat every pi units. To make this a little easier to see, I'm going to remove the graph of sine and cosine so you can see just the tangent x by itself. We see that nice repeating periodic function. Notice that the period of this function is not actually 2 pi, like sine and cosine. The repeating portion here is actually only a width of pi units long. Notice the first piece in there is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And if we do pi over 2 minus negative pi over 2, we would actually get out pi. Likewise, we have the next space between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 and then the next space between 3 pi over 2 and 5 pi over 2. So every interval of tangent x is pi units wide for a period of pi. Now, why do we have this vertical asymptote? Well, that has to do with the fact that tangent is a ratio of sine and cosine. Let's go back and actually draw this function on our paper axes and then see if we can coordinate that with the original sine and cosine functions to determine why we're seeing what we see. I'm going to go ahead and use a completely different color to graph the tangent function. Recall that we have asymptotes for tangent x at pi over 2, so I'm going to draw a vertical asymptote at pi over 2. We had one at 3 pi over 2, so let me draw that one in as a dashed line at x equals 3 pi over 2, and then at negative pi over 2, so another dashed line at negative pi over 2. And then jumping back to the graph, you can see that the tangent function passes through the x-axis, 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, all of those are x-intercepts of the graph. So let's add those to our hand-drawn graph, 0, pi, 2 pi, maybe negative pi, those are x-intercepts of the tangent graph. 
and then let's go ahead and sketch in what that tangent graph looks like. So it kind of swoops up and then uh, swoops down going to the right and left of each of those x-intercepts. From the x-intercept to the right, it swoops up. And from the x-intercept to the left, it swoops down. And that's our repeating graph that we can see. And that gives us a nice repeating graph of tangent. Now, why do we have the vertical asymptotes and x-intercepts where we do on tangent x? Recall that tangent x is actually sine x over cosine x. I'm going to use blue for the sine x and gray for the cosine x. So that as I label the graph below, you can see the difference between those. Let's start at a value of pi over 2. The sine value for pi over 2 is 1. And the cosine value for pi over 2 is 0. And so if I use that ratio of 1 over 0, we can see that this comes out to be undefined. And so the value at pi over 2 for tangent is actually undefined. Let's do the same thing at 3 pi over 2. So again, at 3 pi over 2, I'm going to erase this one. 3 pi over 2, I have a sine value of negative 1 and a cosine value of 0. So now I would be using negative 1 over 0. And that also comes out to be undefined because we can't divide by 0. And so this is also an undefined value of tangent. And that happens every time there's a vertical asymptote. We are dividing by a cosine value of 0. Likewise, if we look at the values where we have an x-intercept of 0, let's see what's happening there. Again, I'm going to back up here and label, let's look at the value at um, pi. So sine at pi is 0, and cosine at pi is negative 1. So now we have 0 divided by negative 1 for our tangent value. And 0 divided by a value that's not 0 is actually 0. So now our tangent value comes out to be 0. And that is where the x-intercept is at tangent of pi is 0. We'll do one more. Let's look at what happens at a tangent value of 0. We have a sine value of 0 and a cosine value of 1. So now we're doing 0 over 1, which again is 0. So the tangent there is 0, and that's where the x-intercept plots. I'm going to jump back to Desmos just so you can see it a little bit clearer. We have our x-intercepts sitting right there at 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. That's where the cosine graph has value to it, and the sine graph is 0. So every one of those x-intercepts are where the sine graph is 0. Hopefully you can see that with both of them superimposed. The asymptotes are where the cosine value is 0. So if we look at every vertical asymptote, it corresponds with where the cosine value is 0, because that's the denominator value that produces an undefined tangent graph. This graph of tangent is periodic. It has an infinite number of vertical asymptotes. It occur whenever cosine x is 0. And we could write the equations for each of the asymptotes, or we could write a generic equation. So if I write an equation for each asymptote, let's actually just start back where x equals negative pi over 2. That would be an asymptote. Where x equals pi over 2 would be an asymptote. Where x equals 3 pi over 2. The next one would be at x equals 5 pi over 2. And the thing to notice here, if I go back in and where I have negative pi over 2, I put negative 1 pi over 2, so you can see it a little bit better. And when I have x equals pi over 2, I'm going to put in 1 pi over 2, again, so just so I can see it a little better. What I'm doing in the numerator is counting by odd numbers. And so I have negative 1 pi over 2, 1 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. The next one would be 7 pi over 2, 9 pi over 2, etc. And so a general equation for this would be x equals 
n pi over 2, where n is an odd integer. Now, sometimes we see this written in a slightly different format. If we want to let n be any integer, then we have to write it with a, an odd formula. So the other way we can say this is x equals, and then in parentheses, 2n plus 1, and that'll be times pi over 2, where n is any integer. So as long as you define what n is appropriately, you should have no trouble here. Now, we already talked about the period of tangent. So the period of tangent is pi, whereas sine and cosine, it's 2 pi. The midline for tangent, where tangent has its middle value on the y-axis, is at 0. Let's just jump back over to the graph of tangent and take a look. Um, we can see that it's nicely centered around y equals 0. Now, to write the domain for tangent, the domain is all real numbers except where those asymptotes occur, and that's a little difficult to write. So rather than writing it out in interval notation, I'm going to write it out in words. I'm going to say all real numbers. I'm going to abbreviate using that capital R with the two bars in it. All real numbers except x equals n pi over 2 where n is odd, or where n is an odd integer. And then to write the range for tangent, well, the range is all real numbers. We go from negative infinity to infinity as we approach those vertical asymptotes. So the range is actually very easy to write. It's negative infinity to infinity with parentheses on both sides.